morning. Bad Mormons. I'm Mandy. And I'm Charlotte. I'm Erica. Hi. Yay. Yay. Special <laughs> guest. We have, you guys know, we have so many stories and me and Erica have so many stories it, from pretty much when Charlotte was a baby. So Charlotte gets to hear them uh, in case she hasn't heard them before. She gets to hear them live on the internet with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a fun plan today for you guys. First of all, we're going to cheers. Oh, in case you're wondering why you're here, right? We tell you stupid stories about stupid shit we did. Usually while we're drunk, while we're getting drunk. Or high. Or, or uh, on acid for me. I spent <laughs> most of my most of my teens and 20s on acid. So yeah, me too. What was that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so today we thought it would be so fun. Normally we're drinking wine. Uh, today's the 4th of July. We're looking at all of our festive selves and we thought it'd be fun to taste some whiskey together on the internet for you. So if you're listening, you should probably grab a bottle of whiskey and drink with us. And uh, Mandy, tell us about the whiskey that you scored for us. <laughs> I am really, really excited about this. I'm going to, I can't tell the exact whole story because I could probably get in trouble, <laughs> but we're going to drink this. We're going to taste this Weller 12. And I was considering not even doing it because I didn't want to have you not be able to taste it with us, Erica. But I decided since our Disneyland trip got postponed because of COVID, I'm going to, we're going to taste this and we're going to save some so that we can taste it together when you come out here. Yeah, land. So, uh, long story short, well, Manny came home from work one day and said, "Charlotte, I need you to Google something for me. <laughs> Put in Weller 12." I'm like, "Is this like a lemonparty.org thing?" Because I don't want to do it. <laughs> Is it two girls one cup again? Because you can't unsee that shit. Exactly. <laughs> But I Googled it and then I saw, holy shit, is that a five hundred dollar bottle of whiskey? Mm -hmm. It and is. I don't know why it's that much because I guess it's so hard to get. Yeah. The thing is, so I get to work and there's four bottles of this on my desk. And I was like, oh, whiskey. I didn't know anything about it. I, I brought one to the register and I was like, 35 bucks. Sure. I'll take one. Turns out those were set aside for somebody very high up in the company to purchase because they're allocated. Like basically any, I think there was four bottles allocated to the entire region that I work in and uh I was like fuck I'm gonna have to confess once I realized after I bought it that it was meant for this person um but there there was probably a total of like 12 or 15 different bottles of really rare hard to find stuff that's not expensive per se but it's expensive because you can't find it anywhere right, right. so luckily I was getting all ready to confess when I handed this person the other like 16 bottles of whiskey and they didn't even notice that that one was missing so <laughs> Lucky so for us. Cheers. Awesome. <laughs> what are you going to drink, Erica? So I have, we have a really nice, I, I granted, I don't have 500 or $700 whiskey, but I've had that before and it's worth oh, yeah. every fucking penny. Oh, I, um, I haven't had the Weller. What I am drinking today is some High West, which is a local distillery that we have here. And it is absolutely fantastic whiskey. Um, this first one I have is the American Prairie Bourbon. Um, so it's got these really nice, smoky, sweet notes. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice uh, whiskey bourbon. It's so uh, I love black. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Ooh, bitey heat too. I like that. How's yours? I mean, it's good. It's real good. I wouldn't pay five hundred dollars for it, <laughs> but it is. It goes down smooth. Very I, smooth. No bite. It's delicious. It's a little vanilla y kind of. Oh, nice. I would put that on on par with the Woodford Reserve, though. Like, yeah, it's a weeded bourbon, which I guess it's usually rye or corn or whatever. It's good. It's real good. Funny story about this too. Uh, not to get too sidetracked. My coworker at work got a bottle of this about a year ago and he didn't know what it was either. And he was making Jack and Cokes with it. <laughs> and we got oh God. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you don't mix that. I, 
I've had uh, some 500, I had a thousand dollar whiskey once, but I, I, I never buy it. I just wheedle my way into the situation that somebody will give me some. Right. Yeah. Um, that's how you so do that's, it. that's how I get that kind of liquor. We do buy the high West. Um, it, the one bottle that I have, the double rye is their really famous stuff. It's 70 bucks. Um, which is a kind of on the more expensive side for a lot of whiskeys that you get in. Yeah. We have a liquor store here. You can't buy them in the grocery store because we're, we're fucking backwards in Utah. <laughs> um, but I, there, you can also buy them at the distillery and you get them a little cheaper and they do tastings there. So we're kind of crawling out of the dark ages slowly. We, we sell aspects. that brand. We sell that brand. I've seen it. I've just never tried it. Oh, it's really good mm-hmm. actually. Uh, next up is repenting. We had a lot to repent for, apparently. <laughs> Do of course, I wrote down the repenting before we finished recording the last episode. Well, I repent first and foremost for not being able to drink the whiskey a couple of days ago like we were supposed to. Oh, yeah. I came back from sushi with food poisoning. It took about four hours to kick in, which is not a good sign because usually it takes a lot longer than that. So it must be pretty bad. You start feeling Ooh. real shit. Oh, the only thing I ate all day. Anyways, um, so that's why we're recording today. We're There's nothing worse than sushi food poisoning. Yeah. It's like it yeah. Out. Mandy had the brilliant idea of charcoal pills. That really saved me. It took about 40 minutes to kick in, but as soon as it did, I was like, oh, I feel so much better. That's what they give you at the hospital. <laughs> that, it, for dogs and children, too, that is the recommendation for poisoning. So, yeah, that's actually a really bright idea. So, mm-hmm. for anybody who gets food poisoning out there, activated charcoal pills is where it's at. Mm-hmm. I keep some in my, in my medicine cabinet for that purpose. I and if you run out of points. eyeliner, you can make eyeliner. with it. <laughs> Ooh. We, uh, we used to activate charcoal for uh, hangovers. If we know we're going to hit it hard, hit it pretty hard the night before, or start switching from wine over to vodka or something <laughs> stupid, then we're like, okay, let's take 12 charcoal pills before we go to sleep. It usually works. So, oh, am I like in my late seventies and I don't know that information? <laughs> How do I not know that? Yeah, like, I'm always like, oh, I better eat a loaf of bread to soak up my wine before I eat, uh, before I drink vodka or whatever. Charcoal, but, um, charcoal, right? Nice. Yes. Um, my other repentance was a. Pa- this is what I wrote down while I was drunk. It said Rudy Giuliani. Hard to say drunk. So I apologize for saying it really fucked up last week, apparently. Um, did you listen to the podcast? But I didn't listen to it, so how would I know? <laughs> Rude. Doesn't even listen to her own podcast. I listen to it while we're editing it. Actually, I have to listen to it for a fucking third time. I'm live there for it. Then I listen to it. Then I'm going to go back and listen to it again. I'm not that obsessed with my own voice. I'm sorry. I feel like I have to listen to it because I'm a Patreon. Yes, so I, I, I pay to be a part of, of <laughs> your whole machine. So I'm going to get my fucking money worth and see if you talk about me or something exciting so we'd like to thank our patrons yeah by the way (laughs) shout out to the patrons uh you guys fucking roll actually uh we may not have mentioned it but we're recording this with video and audio today um the video is especially for our patrons only and all of our tits are looking really good right now so i i have a star broth Ooh, (laughs) yeah girl I thought that was important to share with the patrons. <laughs> it's very patriotic, too. I really like it. That's that's why it's on here. Yeah. Uh, I have one thing to repent for, which was uh, last week when we were recording, we were talking about poor Britney Spears and her father controlling her uterus and among other acts of subjugation. Uh, and we were like, where is Britney from? She's from like Alabama or Mississippi Somewhere, wasn't yeah. that far off. It's Mississippi. So Britney Spears is from Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Uh, I would also like to point out, I saw something on the Facebook about somebody was talking about this whole Britney thing and said when Robert Downey Jr. got high mm. as fuck on cocaine and woke up in a neighbor's bed, did they go and take his rights away? Fuck no, they didn't. If anything, they made him Iron Man. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, but it's interesting because they did. Uh, Brian Wilson of the Beast of the Beach Boys was under a conservatorship, mm-hmm. so it just it depends on how. It, but mostly, it's women. You are absolutely right. Um, uh, almost, it's a Brian Wilson, though he was from how much Charles money Benson. you're worth, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, it depends on yeah, how much money I, you're worth and how much you can be controlled, uh, right? Dedicated tiger blood. <laughs> right yeah look at charlie sheen i never even thought about that he's got access to all his will yeah he does yeah 
Um, and, and so does Ozzy Osbourne. And yeah. so, I mean, there's, there's quite a few crazy, Johnny Depp, who is oh, yeah. absolutely a nutcase. Um, and so enabled. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to confess and apologize for that because the Depp fans are going to come after me. But he's very, very enabled and people feed him drugs and let him behave really badly. Yeah. We do lots of drugs. Nobody's telling. Nobody's yeah, but we're not else. fucking millionaires. Well, should no, it, and why I, should it I, matter? I have to get my own. I have had when I have done. Not that I do drugs. I'm a professor. I don't do drugs. But when <laughs> I did, um, <laughs> I, 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 uh, uh, is there any cool shit going on out there in the world right now? Uh, yeah, balls deep. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called oh sorry balls out <laughs> Fuck. i even wrote it down and i still didn't read it i said balls cool i got this <laughs> we our friend uh friend of the podcast her life partner was had a starring role in a very small film uh, made by our friends it was like a 15 minute uh no all in all i would say it was like 40 minutes long oh, 40 minutes so film. like it was Ryan Covington and Meekish. You can't say last names. He's famous now. <laughs> That's true. He wrote a movie. He has an IMDb. I can say his last name. That's true. Fair, um, enough, fair enough. I don't Is know that all his last name or else I'd say that one fucking too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, they made this movie called Balls Out. And it's it's a buddy cop film. And it's really good. It's and really I don't know funny. how I haven't seen it until now. I guess they made it in like maybe 2010-ish or something. Yeah. You can find it on YouTube. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Balls out. Balls it's out. uh it's it's a very amateur film, but it's they did a really good you job. You know what? Okay, but the reason why we even brought uh the Mandy's doing like, haven't you seen the the balls out movie? I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? Was because one of our friends' dad started like you know, auditioning for movies and whatnot. So he we're watching these movies that he gave us. And mind you, he's like 70, he's Italian, he's got you know an earring, always has a toothpick in his mouth. He's a type. He's got he's a type, right? <laughs> Anyways. He gives us this movie called Shady Nights and it starts off with all these girls in laundry and it straight up looks like uh, how you would shoot a porn, right? And we're like, is this a fucking porn? No way Polly gave me a porn. Um, but essentially he was a nightclub owner. I say that in parentheses. Um, the nightclub was sexy. It was real sexy. And if, you know, you wanted a lap dance or something. Anywho, um, but Mandy halfway through that movie was like, I'm so glad that our friends are even more talented than whatever this shit is. And it was true. It was filmed better. It was written better. The acting was better. The sound was better. Sound was better. Like everything about it. So you can say amateur hour all you want, yeah. but that shit done, was done really well. Yeah. Well, and what I was getting at too is our uh, executive genius creative director. Uh, it's her, her life partner is one of the actors in the Lead movie. Actors Lead actors. In actors the movie. <laughs> and who's also BFFs with Charlotte's uh, life partner. So we got to experience uh, and and show Craig the the magic that was Joe as like Italian mobster mobster dude. dude. I love it. So balls out, everyone check I it out it. on YouTube. Balls it's hard out. to find on YouTube, but maybe we'll, we can link to it. Yeah, we'll link to it on our, our social Facebook. media. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and also, I wanted to mention in passing, it's a little late now, but uh, Derek uh, Chauvin, Chauvin was sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison for killing George Floyd. So that's not enough, but it's good. It's a start. And it, w it would have been nothing if that Somebody girl had hadn't filmed it. Yeah. Yes. And a, it was a, a young girl, a minor filmed that and won a Pulitzer Prize in journalism for doing that and changed, it started to change the world. And now we need to get rid of qualified immunity. And then we can actually talk about how we reform the police because police are important they just don't do the right things yeah who fucking decided to call it defund the police that was such Horrible a bad marketing. idea i think that was the republicans <laughs> yeah uh, sure. yeah and i think i think it, I, I think defund was picked because it, it it like overhaul restructure divide retrain and um recontextualize the role of police is too long to fit in a chant so <laughs> perfect if a defund was just what we did they did. I, uh, I uh i wrote down I, I changed our next little segment to like instead of current events what's on twitter because i just 
always check Twitter now because it's the most current. Um, and by the time this airs tomorrow, this is even going to be a little bit too old. But when I when I jumped onto Twitter, it was like, what's trending? Uh, Cthulhu is trending on Twitter. <laughs> I was what like, is that? what does that mean? So Cthulhu is like the deep ocean monster that comes up to rise and enslave all the people. And it's a, you know what Cthulhu is, right, Erica? I, I, I do, yeah. Um, uh, it, it, and I thought it was Cthulhu. But oh. it, it is, it, but I'm probably wrong. Yeah, it's- There is an H know. in there. Honestly, I'm pronouncing it the way South Park pronounces it. So that could be <laughs> it wrong. It might be right. And now I'm drunk and I can't remember the author who wrote about it. Um, it oh God, Lovecraft, H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, so it's, Lovecraft? it's um, uh, it is the, the God of the like hell dimension mm-hmm. who under the is ocean. just gonna, under yeah. Yeah. Who's going to eat you. So you guys nice. saw the, that the ocean's on fire, uh-uh. right? The yeah. Ocean. I posted it on our uh, Instagram. That's it's how I saw it. <laughs> yeah. There's a pipeline uh, out in the Gulf that ruptured and it's like a flaming vortex volcano oh, whirlpool shit. of fire. Yeah. Check out our Instagram. You'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really fucking freaky looking. And then, um, so that's happening. And so I was starting to like get into that. And then I, re- I read this tweet, which basically just summed up, uh, it's the best tweet uh, that could sum up this entire week. So I'm just going to read it to you guys. Uh, the guy's uh, handle is at RK Barney. He says, half the trees in Canada just got lit on fire by a global warming induced heat storm. And hardly anybody's talking about it because an oil company set the ocean on fire. And the only person who got in trouble for lighting up is Shikari Richardson. <laughs> Shikari Richardson. She's being disqualified from oh, the Olympics right. for smoking. Wait, it, she's she's stupid. actually she's she's been suspended for twenty days, and that's the trade off. But the Olympics are they're not only like horribly racist, they're also so behind in what a, a performance enhancing drug is. Because I'm pretty oh sure God. marijuana might be performance enhancing for like weightlifting, and other for than that, Cheetos. Yeah. It, other than that, it's really, really not an enhancer. It's a mental health tool that people should be allowed to have. So well, it was in the stories, <laughs> but uh, the Olympics also won't let natural hair, um, uh, uh, swimming caps be allowed because they can don't conform to the face of the head or the, yeah, they don't conform to the natural the head. head, which yeah. who decided what was fucking natural. Right. It, it's cute. It's cute. So anyway, Uh, That was the perfect tweet to sum up the entire week, I feel like, of news. (laughs) And so I had to read it. I liked the one that that said, no, we said free Britney, not Cosby. Oh, yeah. Mother forgot about that. We were just talking about that, too. Hey, I think now's a really good time to take a break and hear a word from our sponsors. I think you guys are really going to like this one. Let's do it. a hardworking man taking on a 10 12 maybe 14 hour workday making that money to support the extended family and 10 percent tithing your heavenly father demands with that long day four wives and 18 kids we understand how stressed and sweaty a good man can get we know how uncomfortable and stinky it can be for your sperm purse bouncing away all day in your magic underwear with no relief that's why your friends at temple twat have created a new line just for all you hardworking men say hello to bishop balls Bishop Balls is a revolutionary new line of products made just for LDS men. Products you can trust just as much as we all trust Joseph Smith. Why not give Sack Sponge a try? Sack Sponge is like a ladies maxi pad, but way more manly and really shouldn't be compared to a maxi pad. Sack Sponge is an adhesive pad that sticks to the inside of your garments and collects the excess sweat from your ball basement that your overworked body is forced to create as a result of the righteous choices you've made in life. Sack Sponge is also treated with a cooling menthol essence to help keep your bearded bagpipes cool and comfortable all day. With Sack Sponge, you can come home from that long shift at the whatever job and be refreshed, ready to please the whichever wife and attempt to make a future wife for Uncle Hollis. So do your dangling dice and your lady slice a favor and give our new line a try bishop balls bishop balls and temple twatter a subsidy of gentlemen's genitals llc which is owned and trademarked by fhg bed mormons for more information on our line of amazing poopoo pee products find us on instagram or twitter at gentlemen's genitals 
Family Home Evening with Bad Mormons listeners get 20% off your first purchase of Sack Sponge. Just use the promo code FURBURGER at checkout. That's promo code FURBURGER for 20% off your first purchase of Sack Sponge. <laughs> I just her her a natural knack to come up with different names for genitalia will never cease to amaze me. Well, I thought Erica's the one who co- coined gentleman's genital. She's the one who said it originally. Oh, right. <laughs> right. But, but honestly, the, it, so many so many words for balls. It, 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 it's like it's like Eskimo snow. She's she's sort of like the the Eskimo snow of of testicles. Um, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I don't know if we told you, Erica, but we went ahead and immediately secured the Twitter handle, the Instagram account, and probably an email address no, a too. Website. Oh, a of website gen- of gentle- gentlemen's genitals. Yeah. And we've just I'm been really sitting on it. I'm really surprised that those hadn't been taken yet because it just it rolls off the tongue as mm-hmm. gentleman, gentleman's well, first, genital. First, we did was secured the website. I was like, well, we need the website. It's ten dollars a year. It's fine. We'll just buy it. And That's then. Awesome. And then I'm glad that we got the rest of it. So yeah, that's great. So now we actually, could, because of hey, uh, Courtney's brilliant idea, now we actually have something to do with the accounts. We've just been sitting <laughs> on them, so now we're going to use them to favorite, promote our, uh, our sponsored products. <laughs> Kentucky Straight <laughs> Bourbon Whiskey. Oh, that's nice. I like it. And I love it. I like it. I like now and again. Just I'm just with the, the Jameson it. Irish, mm-hmm. which is my standard go-to. I can drink that every time. It's very drinkable. Um, if it's on tap somewhere, I'll order it. It's it's a good midline. I just like whiskey. So. Fantastic whiskey. Don't apologize for Jameson. We love Jameson. Jameson's great. My go-to is Buffalo Trace. Oh, mm. I like that too. Oh, cheers, cheers. You know, and the thing is, is Jameson isn't so hot tasting after you've had like two or three other really good quality whiskeys. I don't know which one I like better, the Weller or the Woodford. Honestly, Wood, Wood, Woodford, fill in the blank, Wizard. <laughs> really? Woodford's a little sweeter. It's smoother. Yeah. And it's got a little bit more vanilla kind of, I don't know. I it's say sweeter. Fucking good, though. Delicious. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite out of my flight is the High West Double Rye sexy sexy utah whiskey i can't wait to try that one made in salt lake um but yeah if you if you sell it i can not more than highly recommend them do we have some stories for the people this week or do we have some stories (laughs) we have we have a story that i have been telling people for years when i talk about um chaotic good um because i think we were a force for chaotic good um it, at this at this point we were karma in action and i'm never going to think that i did the wrong thing on this trip um my life partner is the person who reminded me of this cuz i kept on thinking this happened when we were in high school no this happened when i was in college i had already started dating um kefer and cuz he dropped me off up there and hung out a little bit and then he had to go cuz he was working in the morning or at rehearsal or something i don't know mm-hmm. and man so when there. you say up there when you say up there set the scene for us oh okay so we are up very close to bear lake almost close to idaho and logan canyon we're in a place called tony grove lake and it is a beautiful campsite there is a big lake there are lots of spaces for camp people to be around and when we were up here in the late 90s um sometimes you could get almost the whole lake to yourself, which was amazing. Uh, There was, you're very high up in the mountains. There's great star views and things like that. And then also, um, you know, there's water, there's a lot of hikes around, there's a lot of trees. It's a beautiful, beautiful place that you could get free uh, camping. You don't, you still don't have to reserve camping there. Uh, So you can just come up and find a site. There's plenty of wood around for campfires. You can get a place that has at least seven tent pads, places that you can put a ton of people. And so that's what we did. You know, I I will say that it was a rude awakening for me when I left Utah to realize that that wasn't like that everywhere else. Like you had to reserve shit. It was a fight to the death for campsites in like California and Hawaii. Even it's like Utah 
is still and was then like a really precious gem for outdoor activities. It, there's still a lot of places like in my area if I want to go camping in my area I have to reserve something in January we just got back from the high Uintas and I I reserved that place in January for us to get to because it it, 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 it is there are a lot of people who like to camp there are a lot of people who aren't the best campers who just want to come car camp and bring their mcdonald's up and you, you got to fight for your space it's a uh, it's kind of crazy but this Wait. one we, <laughs> we didn't and there were a lot of us up there and i know at least one of your sisters and i want to think it was tiffany mm -hmm. was, was tiffany. up there um, because I, I remember at one point camping with Tim, Tiffany and going, damn girl, you are a good camper. You are my type of camper girl. Um, because I, I, I like being a good camper. I like being able to like cook and make fires and find a thing. You know, I just like, I, I, I like being a good camper. It's, it's, it's good a, with the fire. Almost as yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very good with the fire, but you knew my dad, like I couldn't get away with not being good at the fire. Fucking um, Cause yeah, he would have just left us out in the yard to freeze if I hadn't figured out how to make one. Um, that's how I learned how to do shit at home. Uh, so we went, uh, we, we had a huge camping trip that, uh, a bunch of people went on Val, your sister, you, um, and I think maybe Paul, uh, I think Keith James was there too. James, James was there. There were a few other girls and I want to say maybe it was Melissa and maybe Dorcas was up there. There were a few people up there. Um, like a pile of people. So we had, we had gone up there. I was obviously, I was at the age that I could buy alcohol. So I'm sure other people brought alcohol up too. There was a little liquor store in Logan. I don't know if we did that or if we just had a lot of beer. Cause I don't remember bringing liquor up places unless it was tequila or, or, uh, Oh God, what's that fucking, uh, Southern oh, comfort, oh, mm. Southern comfort. <laughs> that was our Southern jam when comfort. we were, when uh -huh. we were young adults. And, and the stupid one that tastes like lip licorice. Oh, Jägermeister. Jägermeister, Jäger bombs. Yeah. Do you remember anyway. all the, the Southern Comfort and Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, and in fact, gross. for like a really long time, Southern SoCo and Diet Coke was my drink of choice. And that's what I drank for like ever Yeah, was SoCo, SoCo or um, Jim Beam. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I drink that. And, and then Captain Morgan spice rum and diet Coke in my, in my later days when I moved to Salt Lake and was drinking a lot of tequila and making bad life choices. <laughs> um, <laughs> delicious though is, um, uh, lemonade and, uh, was when you just told me the rum spice rum. Cap oh, Captain yeah. Morgan. Yeah. Captain Morgan Lee. lemonade's delicious. Well, and in fact, to celebrate the, it, it's the 4th of July today that we're recording this. Mm -hmm. um, so to celebrate the 4th of July, uh, my life partner has made some iced tea and we're going to have uh, iced tea and lemonade and some really nice uh, whiskey in that. And that'll be our libations for this evening. Mm, that sounds yummy. I, well, I'm, I'm an, I'm an old lady drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so are we so, well it's, it's, i don't know about charlotte charlotte's a baby a mint julep <laughs> okay charlotte, she's the I, oldest old charlotte, lady. i remember when you were born how does that go? <laughs> <laughs> i love that story it feels worse for me than it does for you um <laughs> all right so, so we're we're camping at tony grove all the kids so are there all the cool kids all the kids there. are there and and we have we have a really nice setup we've got a lot of tents uh we've been hanging out and playing around taking walks we made dinner i'm sure every there were like 18 uh bags of flavored chips around because that was a thing we do and I know that I took acid because I was selling it at the time. <laughs> um, and, uh, it, but I was only selling it, not for money. I was selling it so I could have free acid because that is, that, that is my literal, it's still to this day, stupidly, it's my favorite thing to do. Um, anyway, 
Oh, I, I mean, I also like sex and eating food, but I mean, for drugs, that's, that, <laughs> that, was the, that was the nice thing. Uh, so we were on that and it's, it, it has gotten dark. So when the summer up in the canyon, that means it's probably uh, 1030 at night that it has gotten dark and we see these little lights coming up the side of the mountain and do you I don't know if you remember this uh Mandy but oh. it takes a while once you can see the lights for them to get to, to Tony Grove it's really high up there you have to pull off the canyon you're doing it purposely when you're getting there so right. this little this little car comes up and after about 20 minutes you can hear some douche ass music coming from that vehicle um and it I'm trying was to remember some what, sort of i'm trying to remember what the douche ass music was at the time i feel like it's like corn i i want to say i want to say that it was if corn came out of sears um <laughs> it was it was like really it, uh like it, like if lorena mckenna or if if you were trying to do sail away or something like that but just to make it make it from walmart um <laughs> kind of it, it 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 was some it was really weird music it wasn't very hard it might have been corn though because i also feel walmart about corn um mm -hmm. uh, except for their episode of scooby doo which was pretty okay uh it, it, yeah it, it it so you heard this music as they were coming up and and all i know was that there's a shit ton of other places for them to be around they don't need to be near us they came right to us, right to our raging fire, right to our big amount of people at a campsite. And I know that most of us got dropped off there. Um, and also, they, we were already set up. We were already inebriated. We couldn't leave. Right. We weren't, we weren't going to leave where we were. They saw a party which looked like a rager because they didn't realize that we were like a tight knit group of people. And that's how we always partied. And they're just like, we're going to crash that party. Right. Right. Did. But they were, they were, uh, they were a few years older than us for sure. And uh, what I remember about the van is it was so heavily eighties. It was one of those, it was, a, I called it the rape van. When I tell this story to other people, I'm like, and their rape man, <laughs> it was mobs. It was like that soft mob Southwestern shit from the eighties <laughs> that people were putting together and it had couches that folded out into beds and there was like some kind of microwave and things in that. Anyway, they pulled up to our fucking site and they decided to get out and just crash our party. And I know Lori went to bed because she was like, fuck that noise. Allie went to bed because she was super drunk um but a lot of it was like hey there's many other there's other sites you could go to and they uh, wouldn't leave pick one how would they not leave did you have, like say hey listen this isn't that kind of party you should probably go well or, and that's what it, we were on acid also oh, so okay. it was a little you don't want to be confrontational but yes right. we were we were hinting to the extreme like this is like a private party you know, go, go look at all these other places you can go kind of. Right. And I think we were pretty scared too. like these, these two guys show up and we don't know what they're doing besides drinking like Mickey's big mouse and, um, hanging out and eating. So it's kind of, it's kind of like Cobra Kai. It's kind of like Johnny and Cobra Kai where he's like hanging on so much to the past oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to like hang out and party with the young kids. It was that kind of vibe. And you were so yeah. like, oh God, what do we do? <laughs> right. Well, and, and I think it was the acid and the drinking and we were already, we had probably smoked pot, drank and, and eaten the acid. And we just were ready to, you know, like hang out and eat chips and laugh. And these guys came and interrupted that completely. And they came and joined our fire, which is really inappropriate. So at some point in time, and Mandy, were you on this walk? Cause I think you, because I, I remember you being there, but I might be like on crack. <laughs> Remind I, me. I went, I went for a walk with Val and somebody else. And we were walking up the mountain, just talking about what dicks these guys were. And if there was any way we could think of to get them to leave. When we hear something that sounds like a gunshot. 
Yeah, I and, was there. <laughs> okay. And we hear like a gunshot and it's like, holy fuck. And what we hear is a strangled cry when the gunshot happens. And we thought they've shot Allie. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing that, that we thought happened. So we ran in the dark with our flashlights down from wherever we had hiked to and got to the fire. And when we got to the fire, they had, a, they had thrown a can of fucking cheese whiz in the fire Jesus and the can Christ. had exploded. And that was the sound. Yeah. So you're hearing that like, oh, right. the, mm-hmm. the ex- escaping. Yeah. yeah so we hear an explosion and then we, yeah, exactly. Um, but it, so after that, we kind of felt like we needed to stay closer to where they were because they just seemed dumb piss in the fire and that was the point where i was like fucking don't do that you fucking stupid assholes do you know how that smells do you know how stupid that is but i don't think i had done that or anybody had done that to them until they blew up something and then we're like oh yeah you're dangerous and you're idiots so um eventually they decide to go to sleep do you remember this at all? I, I remember the thing I remember most about this part, I think, is that there was a huge lightning storm going on. Oh, that Jesus had started Christ. rolling in, which yeah, for a very dramatic next store <laughs> step of the story. So, so Utah all, lightning, it yeah. all felt very dramatic and freaky too, because where A, we're on drugs, B, the lightning storm is coming in, and it's like, oh my god, is it gonna rain? Get in your tents, blah 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 blah. Oh, the, and I just want to mention too. Sorry, I just want to mention, too, for the people that might not know, uh, the summertime in Utah has amazing dry electrical storms. It, it could possibly rain, but there, a lot of times it's just like dry as fuck and electricity. So which yeah. is actually kind of really fucking cool. It's, really, it's, it's cool. Really my favorite things. Nowadays, that's what actually causes we have a lot of wildfires happening because we don't have a lot of water back then. The world used to be wetter where we live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um and so you weren't really weird. We, uh, you weren't worried about it. Uh, it's starting a forest fire. At least I wasn't. Now, yeah. when I see dry lightning, I'm like, oh, fuck, what's going to catch on fire? Um, so anyway, lightning storm, dramatic. Lightning storm. Going it, yeah. To so, and you've yelled at them at this point? Yes. I, I yelled at them about the, the, the explosive, oh, okay. the explosive can in the fire. And it was, I think, it, and Mandy can attest to this. I have a huge wealth at, at, in my youth of righteous indignation about things I know a fact about. Right. <laughs> and so I'm sure they pretty much heard like a mouthful from me about how dangerous that is and how they could have put somebody's eye out. And, you know, I'm channeling everybody's grandmother for eternity when I get on this kind of thing (laughs) but but I was pretty pissed that they had put a can in there and then that they were going to piss on the fire it I was like this is so disrespectful you came into somebody else's campsite and you're going to do that no you're not you're not pissing our fire out we're gonna we're gonna keep track of our fucking fire fuck you I have to sleep because I'm really really tired (laughs) (laughs) so they went to sleep they went so and I, they went to sleep, which interrupted our sleep quite a bit because they were sleeping in their goddamn van, their rape van, and they left their music on. And it was whatever sort of 80s soft, like synthesizer, weird music sticks. It was crap. It, it was so not. crappy. <laughs> it wasn't good. It was yeah, there was synthesizer no music. It wasn't that. There were no lyrics or anything like that. So <laughs> not Howard Jones. No, 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 it wasn't. And actually, Har- Howard Jones is super popular here. Because he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love Howard Jones. He's, he's super popular. It was not Howard Jones. There were no lyrics. It was just it was just the music. And I remember it driving me fucking crazy while I was trying to go to sleep. Um, so what did you do, Erica? It, so we decided that we were gonna fuck their car up and because they had been such shitty you know they they had come into our 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 space so what we did was somebody took off all of the all of the little caps to their tires and then the took air a pressure stick. part 
Yeah, and took a stick and pushed it in to let the air pressure out of their tires. And somebody went in to there because they had left they had left the the um, sound on, and I turned on the light in their cab. I turned on their lights to parking. I opened their glove box. I opened their fridge. Um, Don't forget about the light cover. Oh God! Oh God! So I took that off too. So that <laughs> and then or somebody like a, did. Put like I can't a piece remember of who. food in there and put yeah. it back on. Yeah, yeah. I um, they had oh god, they had lunch meat. Yeah, no, they had fish. They had fucking fish. I think it was fish. And we so we put the fish in their light cover and then put the light back on. <laughs> and it, it was for two things. It was like we wanted, but mostly it, it was before cell phones and everything. Yeah. I wanted those fuckers to be stuck when they got up in the morning um because they were gonna sleep longer than we did because they were drinking their cheap beer and shit and they're not you know obviously they're not campers when they come and just take over somebody's site and sleep in their fucking van and don't contribute anything but chaos so so we all packed up they didn't wake up they had two flat tires in the back when we left for sure and we took off from a place with no cell service that is really, really far away from other people. Mm-hmm. They're dead now. And, huh? Uh, they're Damn. dead now. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I, well, I could, I, I, I could only hope. I never you can still find, found. find their skeletons to this day if you go up to campsite 17. <laughs> and when you walk. <laughs> when you walk through Tony Grove, you can hear their douche music playing. <laughs> I'm so glad you told that one story because I forgot a lot of those details. Like I didn't remember the fish and the thing until we were just oh, talking about the glove I'm box. I'm so happy. That. I actually didn't remember it until you said it. And you said the light thing. And I was like, oh God, we did. Um, I had told this story before a lot um, because I, that has never happened to me ever before. I have never been at a site where somebody, I've been to parties where people have crashed it. I've never been to a campsite where people have crashed it. Yeah. And so when I tell that story, it, it is, we are the hand of karma. <laughs> we are the wheel of karma in that story. And I do not regret a single fucking thing we did to those guys because they deserved every piece of it. Charlotte, <laughs> do, you, do you have a story about 4th of July? Sure do. <laughs> um, so I want to say this is now two two or three fourth of July is ago we um me and Craig and some of our friends were down at the harbor and you know drinking watching fireworks all that fun stuff um we uh I don't know it was so stupid we I don't really smoke pot that often but I was drunk probably drinking Captain Morgan lemonades um I was smoking a little bit of the doobers (laughs) (laughs) sorry i interrupted a poignant and then um i don't know like i was just over it i was over this boat party and i wanted to leave and i had the super genius idea that craig and i should walk home and we're only maybe four or five miles from our house and I'm That's like, kind of a lot when fine. you're drunk. I, I, would you say the harbor is four or five miles from here? Yeah, probably. Um, that is that is a lot when you are drunk. Yeah, but I that was is, so drunk that I was like, this is a great idea because it will sober me up. And I, I wasn't ready to go to sleep yet. And I know if we went home, it would be boring. So, but I also just didn't want to stay on this boat anymore because it was small and there was a lot of people and there was kids. And I was like, man. Um, so me and Craig don't really know where we're going. Cause again, stoned and drunk and, um, we're this, uh, Harbor, we're on this Island portion of it. So we're trying to walk onto the mainland and we're walking down these, I can't only describe it as like alleyways under like not underground, but like they weren't on the main part, it's right? The river. You're talking yeah. about the river. I, no, cause we're not over there yet. Oh. We're, we're still on the Island part of the Harbor. Okay. Um, but there's a bridge that goes across, right? So we're trying to get onto this bridge to go across. Anyways, so I, you're hanging out under a bridge. 
is what you're saying. Like a, like a troll, <laughs> right? Um, so where we're walking, it looks like it just dead ends. And I'm like, I'm not walking all the way back. Like this was a labyrinth. I don't even know how we got here. And I was pretty stoned. So my perception was a little weird. Um, and so I told Craig, I was like, fuck that. I'm walking up this concrete kind of hill thing. You know, like when you're on un- underpass, or, you know, un- yeah, underpass, It's like the LA right? river. It's not the right. same. But that's places. not where we're at. I know, but I'm right. just trying to say it's not the same other, like people, uh, other places in California oh, okay. wouldn't know that there's like a concrete embankment that makes a river. Right. Cause it's all, cause there's no water in California. It's all piped in from the Hoover Dam. Right. And so what this does is just, it's concrete and it goes up like that. It doesn't even look steep. Right. But as I'm getting up near the top, it's, pretty steep and I had to actually kind of get down real low and start walking and Craig mind you is like there's stairs right here like as he's walking up the stairs and I'm like (laughs) crawling up this concrete (laughs) embankment kind of a thing and uh I'm just like I think there's even a picture of me like crouched down just like oh I got this or whatever and so when we were younger we used to like to play spies a lot right so we would do that thing where you could put your stomach over the gate or, or whatever the wall was. And then if it had bars, you could hold onto it and then you just flip your legs over. Right. It's like, has anyone ever done that? Yes. 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 Actually. Well, so I have my backpack on and I've finally got to the top of this thing and Craig's just staring at me and I'm like, I got this. And so I go to do it. Well, I didn't realize that my backpack wasn't zipped up. So all these cans of beer start hitting me in the head as I'm upside down. And then, but I'm also trying to correct it so that not more will fall out. And I land on my ankle and it just goes pop, pop, pop. And I'm just like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> Never done anything like that before. Because oh, no. I mean, I've cracked my ankles before, but you know, that didn't hurt. Um, you could tell. And I was like, oh yeah, something's not right. And so I tried, I could put my weight on. I was like, this can't be that bad. I could put my weight on it took two steps. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> How drunk were you though? At this point, not very drunk okay. anymore, but no, I mean, I was. It sobered Yeah, me I up. mean, but that'll sober you up. That amount of pain will right. sober you Right, I was like, oh, right up. that's not good. And I just remember hobbling across the, the bridge where all the cars are backed up because it's the 4th of July. The fireworks have already gone off. So everybody's now going home. And I'm just like, don't look at me. Don't look at me as I hobbled across my thing. And I tell Craig, I was like, you get me an Uber now. And we had to wait for like 45 minutes. I don't really remember going home because, well, no. Okay. I, I kind of remember getting home, finding a Vicodin and just taking it and going to sleep. So now I'm booze at uh, Vicodin. I'm like, not a good idea, Charlotte. I heard. And then you died. That'll kill you. I woke up with my it ankle will. iced and elevated. Craig did me well. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I was uh, I was fucked up for a little while on that. But note to sell, should you do these things, don't take bike it in when you're high and drunk. But um, Arnica, right? I was like, oh, yeah, no, I put some Arnica on it or whatever. And I was talking to um, a person who was cleaning up the salon. And she's like, no, 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 you get Arnica tea. And I was like, oh, you drink it. She's like, no, you stick your foot into it. And I was like, yeah. So she's like, yeah, you have the topical Arnica cream you put on it. But you also get Arnica leaves, make a hot tea with it as hot as you can stand it. Put whatever body part you need the Arnica in. Anyways, it's not a great story, but. I think it's a fucking great story. Oh, it, so, but- it is a good story. And also, yeah, don't don't take Vicodin and when you've been drinking, please, please. So my foot hurt. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't go to doctors. I probably should have gotten surgery on my foot or something. Cause it still hurts when it's like cold out, but I'm like, whatever, it's fine. But I don't did know they if give surgery you physical- was done. Did they give you physical therapy to, oh, to- we're in our family. You only go to doctors after you die. Oh, so- <laughs> Erica, you've met my mother, right? <laughs> I have actually only met your mother one time and I think I spent the whole time with my mouth like this. <laughs> that was intentional. Uh, For those of you yeah. who can't see because you're not a patron, <laughs> oh, yes. uh, Erica's mouth was wide open. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, what I, the met, fuck? I met your mom right before you moved to Washington with Amy. Okay um that was a long time ago it was that's the only one time that I've met your mom and it was I was also sitting with the knowledge that she had sent you alcohol 
turns you into your dad for drinking alcohol. And so Wait, like when I met her and you know, my parents, right. Wait, and, and I, don't my, think Char- I don't think Charlotte's heard that story. Oh God. That, uh, this was 24 years ago, by the way. Do we have time for one more story? Do you want to I think so. Do you want to switch track? You, Mandy, tell Mandy, tell that story because it is a it is a defining moment when I think about the difference between your family and my family. Yeah. And I'm like, how how did we get to be friends? Oh, it was destined because <laughs> Well, the way Erica tells the story, which is accurate and succinct and not it was kind of an eye opener for me to hear her like version of it, was basically like oh, your mom bought you alcohol and then ratted you out for drinking the alcohol that she bought you. And I was like, well, I guess, yeah, technically that's what happened. <laughs> it is exactly what happened. Um, your mom that's not how you, I thought of it at the time. But that- she, had, she had sent you this really nice, uh, it had little cups and things in it, but it was just coffee liqueurs. Yeah, it was a gift basket. So I had coffee cups, a thing of coffee, Bailey's, which was my jam and in high school. And still is uh, Kahlua and Kahlua, Bailey's and Kahlua, yeah. coffee cups and coffee, and that that was my Christmas present. And so me and Erica and Alan, that we were kind of the, the three of us were pretty tight in high school. We would always go to school together. We would go to Seven Eleven every morning before school and get coffee, and then we would usually do the like Irish cream creamers. But now we have the real Bailey's from my mom, <laughs> so we had put that in our coffee mugs and go to class I think we had all had the first class together right the that English class we did and so yeah. we'd be sitting there like are you talking the about computer? the English class where we where we wrote papers for other students on books that we read <laughs> yeah yeah that was a great class <laughs> I forgot about that <laughs> yes that's the class so we're so we're literally sitting in our first period class at seven in the morning drinking alcohol in our coffee that my mom had given yes. us and we, we thought we were fucking cool as shit. Actually, you know what? We were cool as shit. <laughs> we were cool as shit. I'm not going to, I'm, yeah, no, I, that yeah. is, that is part of my self-identity that I was cool as shit in high school and I'm not going to lose that now. Yeah. I, <laughs> so I can't remember the catalyst that happened to like change mom's idea. She probably, it was probably like she was Wiccan and then she went to Mormon and that's what changed. Cause honestly, sure. between our relationship that had changed. No, um, and I don't know if this is the time that they found, I, I don't know if this is the time that they found the necklace when you were doing baptisms for the dead, or if I've just like put these all together, it was but for some that. reason, oh, okay. For some reason, your dad was mad at you and contacted your mom is what I remember. And your mom was like, well, fuck that noise. She's drinking. You mm-hmm. go check her room, which was like a closet attached <laughs> right. to the outside of the house. Um, <laughs> Am I wrong? No, well, <laughs> sort of. Okay. It wasn't a closet. Did it was, a, it was an addition. My dad built it because he had. It was an kids. addition. <laughs> it was an addition. Oh, and I'm sorry. Your alcohol was in the closet. Yes, the alcohol room. was in the closet. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And so, and so she said, "If you, I know she's been drinking. You go check her closet." And then you got in real trouble with your dad, and it was just stupid. And he grounded you and said you couldn't go out and couldn't use the car. And everybody was like, "Yeah, fine." Oh, we'll pick you up then, Mandy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, it turns yeah. out grounding me didn't really do anything. Right. Oh, no. That's really funny because it kind of reminds me of when mom found out. She found out I smoked cigarettes, smoked pot, and drank alcohol all in the same week, but at different times. So, like, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, so, mom comes around the corner. I don't, I've, I always had the same spot that I would smoke around the corner from our house. And she somehow drove by and saw me or whatever. She's like, you're smoking and you're smoking alone. So that means you're addicted. And I'm just like, oh, sorry, mom, whatever. And then I like cut to a week later, or less than a week later, a few days later, I just found out you've been drinking and I'm like, oh shit. So I was like, well, how? And she's like, oh, your friend Nicole's parents told me. And I'm like, which Gail listens to the show sometimes. So if you're listening, I still love you. Um, <laughs> but I guess what had happened was, is that maybe my mom said something about smoke. She's like, oh, well, you know, she drinks too. And she's <laughs> like, oh, well, where is she getting the alcohol from? It's like, 
well from us <laughs> um, so I thought that was also kind of weird it's like you gave me booze and then you ratted me out um and then she found our bong in the closet and but instead of throwing it in the trash she gently placed it in the trash which we gently placed out of the trash and then gave to a friend for safekeeping <laughs> I that's mine I just never got in trouble for any of that because I think my father god rest his soul was really excited when I was buying weed so that meant he didn't have to buy it from his work study students um <laughs> your dad was cool <laughs> he was cool he was cool it was so um, cool honestly truly I'm gonna get sappy for a quick minute it's it was so cool to like have a parent that treated you like a human being rather than a thing that they owned you know I, that is the best thing that my parents did for me which is what I can pass on to Charlotte is they didn't treat me like I was property they tre- they treated me like I was a person mm-hmm. that I had a soul that I belonged to myself um, yeah you're your own thing they they might have been a little dated with a lot of reactions that they had to a few things but man they were working hard to break the generational bullshit that they yeah. grew up with so I was listening erica's daughter name is charlotte she's not talking about me. <laughs> oh yeah we need to clarify i'm sorry yes i mean i named for my daughter like charlotte <laughs> and it's it's kind of about charlotte it's not actually um charlotte is a family name of mine and but also I love that name and I've always loved that name so good on you because you're one of the first ones I knew besides the people I was related to so yeah all right I'm taking a ton of notes right now because I have so many stories that I want to keep talking about but we're going to run out of time for this episode uh I'm not going to spoil them but they're all taking place in your kitchen Erica (laughs) oh Jesus Christ um uh, it, but there were some great things in my kitchen. So many. There were. That was a that was a, a good a good place to grow up in compared to a lot of things. I didn't realize that until I met a bunch of other people because I had fraught things with my mother and fraught things, you know, with both of my parents. And then it was like, oh, wait a second, though. They are, you know, they're fucked up, but they're not that fucked up. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it was delightful. All right, ladies, I think we should call that a podcast. Well, I love it. Thank you so much for having me on. Happy Fourth of July. Happy Fourth. Let's, let's, uh, we gotta, no, we have to end with something to be excellent to each other. All right. We talked about the Gulf being on fire. We talked about some horrible shit happening. The fucking Canada forest burned down. How can we be excellent to each other? Um, one of the ways you can be excellent to each other is to cut down your consumption of meat. <laughs> it's true. You're not fucking wrong. Um, I mean, I'm not. Safe. I've talked about it before. <laughs> yeah, I went, I went vegan and for vegan January and I've just kind of stayed there, which is sort of fucked up. It's kind of weird because I don't, I mean, but, it, uh, if you want to cut your carbon footprint, cut down the amount of meat that you eat. Agreed. And there's. Uh, there's a lot of uh, impossible burgers and things like that that can really help you do that. And maybe just decide that you eat meat two days a two days a week as opposed to more. And that's a way that you can be excellent for each other that is going to affect your children. Yes, I, um, love it. I support it. Long- and I agree with it. Thank now, you. do they make an impossible ribeye? Because until that happens it's not happening for me oh damn but i mean but yeah, so just have a ribeye like once a week and eat other things I the other time you more. know <laughs> yeah yeah definitely because yeah. yeah i've had impossible burgers they're delicious i've had impossible like the chicken nugget things those are good too like if you eat a chicken nugget from mcdonald's you pretty much might as well eat fake meat at that point because it's pretty much gross starbucks starbucks has a really delicious impossible like egg and egg and sausage and cheese sandwich thing uh not in utah not in utah oh really yeah i Um, I usually get the ham one and i'm like i don't even think about the reason why but i'm just like i love the taste of that impossible i'm getting that one instead the first impossible burger uh, yeah (laughs) <laughs> too much whiskey. The, per- the first impossible burger that I ever had was in Hawaii with you and your roommates. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Uh huh. That's the first one I had that I was like, Jesus, shit. Okay. Good, right? Um, yeah. And I just did vegan January to try to lose weight. And now I'm just a fat vegan, which is sort of confusing, but really <laughs> fun. Um, it's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. You uh, have carbs. Right. I probably do. Well, everyone who's vegan. Uh, yeah. Has carbs. And you I like protein. Yeah. Well, I eat beans and shit. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not saying you specifically. I'm saying the diet in general <laughs> is pretty carb heavy generally. Cause I it, just, it is carb heavy, you know? Yeah. All right, ladies, let's quickly, let's have a cheers. Let's grab a whiskey. Does anyone have a whiskey? Oh my God. I have to pour a whiskey hold. Take a minute. Oh, pour, pour a small one or a large one, whatever you want. Okay. I'm kind of drunk. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Salute. I- Thank you. Uh, shout out to the patrons. And while we're at it, I want to do a little shout out to Jen Saki. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the current White House press secretary, she but she's fucking job. amazing. She everything she does is on fucking fire. And I have so much fun watching her. So uh, follow her on Twitter if you don't already. She's the fucking best. She uh, is. And she's she is currently my favorite ginger in the whole world. Oh so God. good for her. It's fucking yeah. fantastic. Second to my brother. <laughs> uh, if you haven't already, please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review because it really helps other people find our show. Uh, check out our merch on our website at fagbadmormons.com. And if you haven't already, head over to our Patreon website where all the cool kids hang out. It's only $3 a month. It'll cost you less than tithing. And we have way more fucking fun than being at church. Right. And if you want to. I did it. Show, Why don't you? <laughs> at the cosmopolitan in october oh yeah what? i was about to tell you erica bad mormons are going to be hanging out at the cosmopolitan and the brooklyn bowl in las vegas october 16th i didn't prepare for that i might have to repent i think it's october 16th i think it is bad religion and alkaline trio are playing i saw that together. No, might as well drive to- down they're coming to Utah too. I'm just saying. But. We got a lot of people coming out. We got patrons coming out from Washington. We got patrons coming out from Hawaii. It's going to be a super fun party. So if I come, will patrons fun. know me? Yes, they will. They will. At least one will. And yeah. Meet some other ones that are that you'll absolutely love. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that happen. We are on all the social medias. We're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. Pinterest. On TikTok. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> LinkedIn, uh, you Facebook. I don't know. I I drink. I'm drunk. I drink. Oh, I drink. We gotta go. Love you. We have Geo Cities. Go to YouTube, like, subscribe. Go to